the selfie takers, the people that come to a location and just all, by default start hipsterizing it. And yes. yeah, almost like yeah. Uh, park life, zoo life. It's just like coming in and yeah, just, yeah, I, it's I, bad I, news. I like, yeah. Yeah, it's, you don't touch our rises. You don't touch them. You know, the only people that can touch our rises are the people that live in it. Yeah. You know, it's like you don't do it. You don't do it. It was always a taboo thing right from the off. The killer killer b- 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 podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. It's a nightmare. Right, you're sounding good. We're sounding good. We're off to the races. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London, or central as you need to be. Yeah? And we're going on transmission. For those of you who don't know, you're switching on now. If you're listening, good morning. Uh, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight to all the regulars. We've got the television app, the free download, sporting art business. We are taking a trip to the northern country uh, to a gentleman that I've been a fan of for a piece. Uh, through different walks in life and uh, punk is very much alive and well but in the form of a 90s cluster of mixed genres and uh, prodigy-esque stomping grounds man the, the people's choice the cult classic jason sleaford mods how are you gentlemen i'm all right how are you mate <laughs> i'm good does that best describe i mean it, it, it's really quite hard to define but does that best describe sleaford mods do you reckon I think you've kind of nailed it, really. I don't really know what it is half the time. I think you just try and put in what really appeals to you through music. Uh, and uh, you, you're right in the sense that it crosses lots of uh, lots of sort of avenues, you know what I mean, and tries to take from each of those streets and, uh, you know, uh, for the final product, you know what I mean. But, yeah, it's generally dictated by street stuff, really, by... by like good punk music, good good rap, good grime. Do you know what I mean? Anything like that. So uh, yeah, defo. Yeah, yeah. Re- <clears throat> regurgitated in a particular way. That again, I think Common Man is a very very undersold uh, statement because when I listen to your album, six albums. Six albums yeah. or more? Yeah, I mean, Six albums, yeah. remixes, Orbital, like all this stuff that's uh-huh. coming through at the moment. And yeah, you have a very relatable tone in the way you deliver your verses, bars. We we'll call them bars for the sake of this show because uh-huh. they are yeah, fucking, sure, sure, they yeah. are fucking bars, bro. Like you've got, thank you. you yeah, you have. It, it kind of harks back to a UK hip hop task force era. Audio, Audio bullies, bullies, I guess, I guess to, to a point. point. Yeah, I think. Um, I wanted to rap. That was the idea. People say, oh, it's post-punk and, you know, you must be big four fans uh, or like, you know, sort of all that 80s post-punk stuff. But no, I was predominantly mainly motivated by rap. Um, uh, I just saw that as uh, a approach to vocals that needed to be explored more and to be adopted more with kind of, English bands, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, and more in, in to bring it more into a kind of mixed arena. Uh, and so, and so, yeah, thank you for that. But yeah, I think, you know, that's definitely what I wanted to do. You know, I don't think I'm a rapper by any stretch of the imagination, but I follow that approach where it's just solid, as you said, bars, chorus, back into the bars. You know, you might, it might bounce off, the words bounce off each other. Uh, and they kind of slip and slide off each other. Do you know what I mean? Like good rappers do. But yeah, I don't think I'm quite there with the old rap, but defo, it's defo in that arena. You know what I mean? No, you're there. You are there, bro. Last, Thank you. You know, the public enemy essence is there. <coughs> the, 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 sure, the, sure, sure. Do you mean the commentation? Do you know, you know what's the what's the process? in? Because like you say, there is a real poetical cult following ad- adaptation to the way that you do spoken word. It kind of, it, is, it does have that... Um, 80s kind of progressive synth thing to it and i know yeah. you know we, we may, may be of the similar age and that certainly is something that is is a great reference in my catalog you know what i mean uh-huh. uh, it's 
it comes from that. What's the processes though? Because like you say, you, you're not quote unquote a rapper. What what's the processes of creating? Just the words. The words are paramount. And sometimes you forget about the words and you think you think sort of flow or whatever or groove. Mm. But the words steer it. If the words are if the words are bulletproof, then they'll find a way, you know, onto whatever piece of music you think that that collection of words will suit best to and Andrew will chuck out a load of stuff and you'll be like no not for that one no no okay that one might work and then you just get on with it you know which is how rappers work I guess you know Mm -hmm. um but yes predominantly it's it's the words first but a lot of the time also it can just be the flow or it can be a, a tone or a groove you could just say one word and that one word will sound brilliant and then you need to add other words to it you know, <laughs> yeah. to, keep, to keep that effective, to keep that effect going, you know. Um, yeah. But it's, you know, one, it's a bit like fishing, in it? You know, once you've got something, you're pulling it up and you're thinking about what to do next, you know. Oh, mate, fishing is what it is. When you, when you hear a good, when something really kicks, and I'm not suggesting there isn't a, you know, there's a batting average to every, body in the studio you you know the more uh-huh. beats you have the more connect you have with one and then all of a sudden it could be like a really big tune for you sure um, when 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 an mc goes into the studio nine times out of ten in my experience it's like the more it bangs the more boom bap the more ram you know the more boom it is the more yeah. the more they're in it yeah. but with with you i get a sense that perhaps you've got there's a there's a real downbeat melancholic dissonant sound to a lot of the I would imagine your your connect with beats are a lot different to the average um, vocalist. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, uh, in Nottingham, you know, there's a big hip-hop scene in Nottingham. Um, or, you know, there was. I mean, there still is to a certain degree, but it's obviously more grime now, more more trap, drill, whatever. Mm. Yeah. But <clears throat> it's, you know, a lot, you've got a lot of MCs that were just, just sounding just too traditional, too, okay, you, I've heard that MC on about ten tunes. Conventional, you know. yeah. Yeah, too, too, yeah, too conventional. And it's just if you listen to anything, I mean, I was predominantly inspired, really, by Cool G rap, Wu Tang, early mafioso, e, you know, East Coast stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where they're talking about, you know, where it's sociological, where it's political. Mm-hmm. It's not just bragging about guns and whatever. It's it's talking about stuff around them. So. I was really inspired by that. And, and and they were, yeah, they were rhyming and stuff, but they were just shouting a lot of the time as well, you know, <laughs> just, just gobbing off. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it in the way I talk. And then it was like, I was into early eighties punk at the same time, but also the sound of uh, last orders, our people were, you know, drugged up, pissed up. Oh, know, I like that. Other. Yeah, That's just, cool. what a great just analogy. Yabbing, yabbing at each other. Yeah. You know, that was almost music to my ears, you know, and I got really inspired by that, you know, because when you've got nothing, when your back's against the wall, uh, I, I just used to really vibe off that in the end. You know, the negative became a positive. So, um, it was important to get all of that in there. And I think that's why, as you, you get back to your original question, is, is why it does sound a bit downbeat, a bit dour. Because it's me, you know what I mean? I didn't want to do some kind of rapper type thing. It would have been a little bit too easy. And also yeah. I think that old approach to hip hop, to rapping, although it's good, you know, and you can still take from it. I think I think it's a little bit, some of it's a little bit like, okay, that's been done, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. It, it's a, respectfully, it's it, like most disciplines in street culture, it's a cheap to enter. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a cheap to enter culture and sometimes working class rappers and this isn't generalizing because I think I know where you're coming from with the shouty aspect of UK rap it can often be masked um, and you lose the content you lose the you you lose the poet's corner you lose the conversation and the expression to reach out to people to give them an understanding of what you're actually really trying to say in it it's a real fine line, yeah. It's a really you can you can delve into traditionalism with it, and what I'm talking about is old attitudes, old ideologies, old values and principles, or 
you can try and step out of that and do something a little bit more cleansed, a little bit more doors of perception style approach to things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think do you think the door closes a little bit when it comes to studio work? I would imagine for for an act like you guys that have built lineage on just your yeah, real unique sound and an approach to things. Sometimes influences need to be outside the studio door. You don't. You must have tunnel vision for a lot of this rap stuff. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by doors closed? As in, like um, uh, studio wise, lack of inspiration, or to, to 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 avoid too much inspiration. Like there must be a, a studio closed door policy when it comes to you being inspired. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm not sure. I mean, the inspiration comes wherever, and it just hangs onto your memory bank. You know, whether it's in your secondary memory or your long term or your short term, whatever. You know. Uh, it can be instantaneous. I, I tend to write lyrics on the spot as well. Um, mm. I find that if I labour too much over them, they become forced, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and it's like, I think sometimes it's effective if you just dash them out and mm. don't really care about them, almost. Treat them with a bit of disdain because yes. a lot of the time, you know, I find life and the experience of life completely unacceptable and I want to bring that across you know what I mean so I think the best way to do that is to not cover ability too much and just treat it with a little bit of you know arm's length and you you come up with the results then in a in a lot of respects it's I mean if I'm going to sit there and worry too much about writing politically motivated lyrics I'm fucked you know <laughs> yeah, you'll be like, down the pub <laughs> it's just daft isn't it it's like it's just going to sound like some earnest Ernest Wanker, really. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to I don't want to do that. I want to do stuff that is suggests things, that sits on the surface but is bulletproof, you know what I mean? It's a real fine line, isn't it? Super fine. It is. Line. It is such a fine line. It's such a fine line. And I think part of that fine line uh can be achieved by simply A loving it and B being honest with yourself, you know. Mm. Uh, these two things you've got to wear on your art, you've got to wear on your sleeve, you know, you've got to love it. You really have got to love it. Yeah. C- creatively, frenetics in, and patterns within the verses. You, I, I've heard in some of your stuff that actually the, the patterns in the way in which you rhyme, you're filling in the blanks. I would imagine because of that, because of that well of influence and being able to just plug into it without, like you say, not too much thought, don't overthink shit, it allows for more play and versatility on on the track you're able to just go in any which way direction patterns and in turn that becomes a melody what you're actually doing in in repetition becomes the melody and that's just the freedom of 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 the of the blank canvas right yeah that's the beauty of it that's the beauty of it and i think what i used to like so much was people talking as we talked about earlier with the you know getting inspired by people at last orders uh and I used to, I kind of, without sounding like a wanker, I fell in love with the way, <laughs> with the way I talked. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, I love it. No, but you know, yeah. it's just like, yeah. This Talk is, that shit. It's your podcast. You know what I mean? And when, I, when I moved to Nottingham from Grantham, um, you had, you've got this whole mixed melting pot of cultures. It's, it's very multicultural. Uh, I was hanging around with lots of black lads, white lads, what Asian lads, whatever, you know, and all of them into music. And, you know, all of them with their little lingo and blah, blah, blah. And you just kind of bounce off it, you know. Mm. Um, And in in a way, your accent then begins to change slightly. I'm not saying it's like talking like these people, because I didn't. But it's like it brings in new colours. And so you got, I got really inspired by that, you know, but didn't know Mm. quite how to do it. And uh, it it was always something that, was obviously the right idea, but uh, I, I shied away from it and stuck to traditional methods of, you know, guitar and rock music and all that bullshit. Uh, uh, and until one day it snapped, you know what I mean? And I just started to embrace that consciousness more, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I do know what you mean. It, 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 it's, it's a com- confidence that you suddenly find within yourself and then it becomes yes, this thing. Isn't yes, it? yes, definitely. Uh, so, you know, it got... 
it, I, I, yeah, and I still believe it. You know, it's like it's like Kanye said, isn't it? You know, it's the new rock and roll, hip hop. It, it is. Let's face it. It's dumb. Yeah. You know, it's, it just pisses all over anything else. Still, still. and the offshoots. You know, everything yeah. that's come off it, trap, drill, whatever. You know, and it keeps evolving. It's like I don't really see guitar music evolving. You know, no. Do what uh, uh, controversially because I know you know you're very fortunate enough as a as a collective to to swing into the six music world as well as the yeah. you know like we're saying that as the as the bbc's the 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 you some of the like the orbital tune the latest is more than apt for a pete tong spin do you know what i mean it's got it's, it's got all the components of what i kind of love about you know good good hard da- dance music uh-huh. you know uh-huh. um but there is an enemy chic in the world still, and it's a very funny one, isn't it? Like, what is it? It is. <laughs> what is it about band music and the people that prevail? I don't know. I'm perhaps being a bit unfair because, you know, guitar music does still flourish. Um, and in a way, it does sound contemporary still. I mean, we've started to use more guitar uh, guitar things in it, in, or well, Andrew has, in, in the music he makes. Mm. It's still there, I guess, but... I just find that just the four piece, the kind of guitar, bass, drums, vocal, you've got to be doing something special with it. You've got yeah, to, it's good, yeah. Because if you're not, it's, it's really annoying. It's like, I'm wasting my time listening to it. You know, what you're doing, it's not, I really do believe in pushing things forward. And I've got lucky look at it because I've come across this formula with Steve of Marks. I've got lucky, all right. But it made me realise that. That that's the spice of life with it. You got no, hold on, hold, hold on, just a minute. So, how do you mean you got luck, lucky? I didn't get lucky, bro. I just worked hard, and then yeah. it, and then it just happened. I got into. I started to be honest with myself, as we said earlier, and just being a little bit more braver about things and thinking, I'm going to take a risk here. I'm going to do this, you know. Yeah, the when beauty- I found people that. Sorry, go on. No, no, no. The be- I was just going to add value. The, the beauty of it is it is it connects, and I guess that's the that's the real luck of it yeah this is it you know and um i don't know when i found people i could i could uh, work with that would that didn't mind helping me out with my ideas you know at the time uh and then i started to flourish you know i just do but i just do believe that you've got to push it but i am also starting to be aware of the fact that people's tastes people's aesthetic is different to mine you know they might not want to do that (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah i know does this does this does this equate to the cult following that you guys have that, like now bear in mind i'm i may be a bit I, the, I actually was re uh connected with you guys when i watched the sky arts doc on live gig okay, yeah, yeah, and this yeah. is where i started you know hitting you guys up because i was like yeah man look i gotta give it to these guys like i love bands that stay do you know what i mean and I think yeah. you're the same ilk, you know, yeah. I kind of respect that. I may not be into everything in, in the world of punk, but uh-huh. I do admire a good cult band. Do you know what I mean? Even the rockabilly stuff, I kind of dig it. Sure, sure, sure. I, I think you guys fall in that. And when I, when I was, you know, you, you've got to love the situation where what you're doing isn't entirely for everybody and you can accept that. But when it's got when you've got like a cult following, but you 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 couldn't have even foreseen that, right? No, I didn't think it'd leave Nottingham. In fact, we didn't even think it'd leave Andrew's flat. We just, <laughs> I mean, the goal was getting a bit of respect from local musicians, uh, getting a bit of respect from people in general around Nottingham. And when we started getting that, that was great. But then when it started moving to places like Belgium, France. And Germany. Yeah. Then it started getting a bit weird. I can remember a mate texting me and going, this is a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen you in the enemy. It's getting a bit weird. I'm like, I'm like, you know, nobody could believe it. Literally, nobody could believe it. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, and if you could bottle that, it would just be something else. I think with hip hop and... Uh, yeah, the the more street culture level stuff. Um, it's embracive of like extremes and alternative. And what actually begins as alternative suddenly becomes the norm because again, hip hop is such a relevant powerhouse, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. Very much so. Um, it's a, it's a difficult one, isn't it? It's like 
I'm getting sick of some of it, Paul. I'm getting sick of just the way a lot of it is. It's like, I, 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 you know, I can't be arsed now. I don't care if you've got 30 yeah. years of trainers. It's, come on, for sake. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, that in itself is political because who really, really, really seriously wants to brag about what they own? I don't think anyone does. It's almost like a, a form of self-arm. You know, I've got seven watches. <laughs> yeah. And what? Yeah, seven, exactly. I've got eight watches. It's like, fucking really, mate? You, you must be pissed off then. Because it's like... <laughs> yeah, 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 just, totally. Like, it's kind of reverse psychology almost, isn't it? It's like, so I still think it's quite political, that. You know, I think it's... Mm. People are going to rap about that. It's almost as offensive as, you know, punk used to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it's like punk. a new... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like a new form of fucking offensive lyrics that uh, I find, yeah, I'm struggling with it. But you're right. It's like it can come into the mainstream. Yeah. But is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? You know, is the mainstream, you can still take from the mainstream and, the, you know, the, the dominate, you know, the domineering norm. But, mm. uh, you can still take from it. But at the same time, yes, challenge it has a lot of weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to challenge it as well. Like nudge, right? So... The political value on that it's, it's, it's actually challenging the status quo that I like about you guys when you go in um, I love the analogy on that tune where it's like you know, people are just like the selfie takers the people that come to a location and just all, by default start hipsterizing it and yes. yeah almost like yeah. Uh, park life zoo life it's just like coming in and yeah just, yeah it's I, bad I, I news. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, you don't touch eye rises. You don't touch them. You know, the only people that can touch eye rises are the people that live in it. Yeah. You know, it's like, you don't do it. You don't do it. It was always a taboo thing right from the off. Uh, and um, I think, I don't know, you know, some people aren't aware of it, though. And it's like, in that sense, can you blame them? You can't mm. blame them. You just need to tell them. And if then they take on, take it on board, then really you've got to stop there. But I don't know, you know, a lot of it is lack of education. Yeah, moral dilemma, isn't it? They don't actually, big time, do they? Big time, you know what I mean? big time. And it's like, it's weird, isn't it? Because it's like people, if you don't know struggle, are you necessarily going to be hampered in your perception? Not, you know, there are intelligent mm. people from the upper echelons of society. You know, perception is there. So generally not, perhaps. I don't know. It's a fucking weird one. But, yeah, I don't That's know. A really in- this is a really interesting area of conversation that I love talking about. This is yeah. it. It's not, it's just not all, it's just not black and white, is it? It's like, there's lots of layers of stuff. And I think what I'm trying to list, learn, what I've started to learn is that I can't necessarily keep waving my finger at certain people just because they are doing things wrong. Um, mm. You know, you've got to move on. Uh, you've got to state your point. There's nothing wrong with that. But then you have to move on because I think then it becomes more about you than it does about them, you know. And then you perceive the you're perceived to have been in your bonnet about something that sort of could be deceived as, as a, perceived as a class thing when it's not, you know, the thing that you're fighting against, ultimately you suddenly become... The, the the voice of and you don't want to be that neither it's this constant it's not worth it it's not worth it's it. not worth it and like you know I live in a nice little class area now you know it's like you know we've got a few quid in the bank um, yeah. you know we're not rich by any stretch of the imagination but I'm certainly better off than I was and uh, it's 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 a real odd one it's like what you make your initial point by all means and I will continue to but I'm also wary of the fact that it then it can eat itself. It can it can bury itself and lose lose its effect because you constantly are repeating it. Uh, you, you need to move on from it or, yeah. or objectify it in a new way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It can either be toxic or it dilutes itself when you be, you still. John Lydon, bless his heart, he still goes on about the same thing from the late seventies. And whenever you, t- you listen to him talk, it's like, dude, move on. <laughs> Don't move on. <laughs> I think I think with him is you know it's, it's all right to kind of say it. I, I don't know with with these lot these lads are still smoking and drinking aren't they like they were when they were twenty two I yeah, think yeah. that fucks your brain to be honest it even if it's normal yeah 
I'm with you. I'm with you. I think you get past 50, and if these lads are still knocking it down, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just it's just slowly fucking pickling you. So I, I think sometimes people's perceptions are a little bit jaded because of it. Um, I don't know. It's an odd one. I have, no, no, I have I'm with a you. Real, I have a real soft spot for Leiden. He's He did something nobody else was doing back in 1976, 1976 mm. 1975, mm. four, three, you know. He was writing stuff down nobody else was doing. Game-changing. Game-changing, totally. And for that, I just think, yeah, as long as you're not going around shooting people, uh, you yeah. know, it's fair enough, mate. I, I can live with whatever you, what comes out of your mouth now. I really can, yeah. Do you feel like, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, I'm, and, and I'm, I might just add to what I was saying. Those guys were very much the conversationalists of their time. And in this day and age where we're actually allowed to be corresponded to a point, we can talk about what we want. Um, it's, it's actually, they, they set precedence for what... They did, yeah, they did. I mean, but don't get me wrong, um, you know, I can't excuse certain traits from, you know, the human personality. And with people like Leiden, they've been accused of this, that and the other. And I wouldn't accept that, you know, I just wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of these people are, uh, you know, they're examples of their time to a certain degree. Uh, the generation they were born into, to a certain degree, stays with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it models their psychology, doesn't it? And so therefore you're not going to get contemporary statements coming out of the mouths a lot of the time, uh, especially in the here and now. So oh, I wouldn't yeah. accept that. But it's a real hard one, isn't it? You know, he was a very powerful lyricist. Uh, and it's uh, sometimes you just get you just get kind of blinded by that. Yeah, you do. Uh, I miss those powerful speaking, don't give a fuck statements. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's not enough so. of them. There's, they, they're no. all dying, man. We need them to stay. The, the Shane McGowan's and the John Lydon's, you know, the Lemmy's from Motorheads. We don't want them to go. We want them to be forever, don't we? No, we do, you know. Um, I think, I don't know, it's like, I, was having, I had a brief exchange with Chuck D on Twitter uh, about, um, you know, a lyrical content from new hip-hop. and He was just not into it. He just finds it, uh, it, it doesn't do anything for his culture or his people. Mm -hmm. And as a white person, I can't really, really argue with that constructively. I think, I think it's really hard, you know, because I'm not black. I don't know the black experience. Mm -hmm. um, but as we were saying earlier, you know, I do find a lot of these modern rappers... It's, it's like self-harm. It's like, you, mm. this is just bleak, you know, to talk does about it go? cars. Yeah, yes. where's it go? Where's it go? Because you can't be that happy about it because this is not true happiness, you know. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. It really yeah, is. It's a tough one. It is a tough one. And translating it to an, an impressionable young or young audience, you know. I mean, there's young, young people that, check this show frequently um so without in any way because condescending it's, it's it's having the opportunity to open your mind to um deeper conversations isn't it deeper yeah. conversations definitely definitely i think um you've got to educate yourself a bit i think you've got to read you've got to look at things you can't be you can't be uh you know dragged down the alley by too much hatred or generalization or stereotype you just got to stop yourself and you can but yeah. you've just got to be aware of it you really have it. yeah it's like some mad dopamine levels i think with social media being the way it is you know you start looking at one thing you get your head into that next thing they're serving you more god yeah <clears throat> totally totally it's the worst time for it mm. but um taking our heads away from the computer uh and going live again this is something that i saw on the sky arts and man like what's your what's your approach to live performances you you're in arenas where yeah like you say that the, the kind of school of rock the school of punk is a four piece or a three piece or a two piece maybe even a seti um 
What do you what, what do you do? What do you do with her? Sorry, that was a dad joke, by the way. Excuse me. Sorry, Shane H. But what, <laughs> what, what is your process? What is your process in uh, in that creative field where you're you know you're going on and you're doing it, but you're nailing it. The lights are going crazy and stuff. But there, there is a journey to that. What's what's the process? Just start work. Just start rehearsing. Relentless rehearsing for four to five weeks, two months before gigs. Really? If you've got, if you've got new stuff to learn, wow. I tend to start rehearsing two and a half months before so I can nail the new stuff. And I take it easy with it. I, I like to do it three times a day. After about three weeks, you've kind of, you're nearly memorising how many ever songs you're learning. Uh, and then you can put them into a set of songs that you were familiar with, but you just need to, you know, you just need to stretch out that muscle memory and start learning, you know, rehearsing again. So about two, two and a half months. Wow. Uh, and you're just dipping in and out. I hate rehearsing, heavy rehearsing. I hate it. I hate learning lines, like drilling them into my memory. Can't be doing with it. So I tend to start a long time before, you know, you know, a good two, two and a half, as I've said before, before the gigs. So I can lightly, you know, walk into it. Do you know what I mean? I don't want any stress with it. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. It, that's a lot to remember. And the more albums you put out, the more there's an expectation of particular songs to be, yeah, to, to, yeah. to, to be hit a certain way when you're performing them, isn't it? I mean, I love these bands that are like, okay, okay, you know, they turn around to the crowd and go, what do you want us to play? And they... They, the crowd shout back and they just play it. That's brilliant. But I, brilliant, I couldn't yeah. do that. Couldn't Can you imagine? Because you've got too many words. You've got to rehearse them. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. right, this is the set. What you get in. This is what you get in. End of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ex- hey, look, I, and I think people need that to a degree as well. Like, yeah, you're you're doing sellout shows. You're, the, the, the aesthetic is, it's almost like one man, it's like, it's a comedian uh, set up where you go on stage as as Jason as you and you're going there on your ones r- vocally. Yeah, that's that's a that's a huge toll, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a little bit. It's a bit like oh fuck. But <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> I mean, the, the simplest thing someone said to me was just overcome the fear. The I minute mean, if you overcome the fear, you'll be all right. You've just got to get on there. And usually two or three songs into it, you feel good. You feel better about it. Uh, you know, there might be some really hairy moments, but if you fuck up, you fuck up. You just start again. And that's what we literally do, you know. Mm. Um, but it doesn't happen that often, thankfully, because you've rehearsed it. You've rehearsed it well. You're in tune with it. Everything's in tune with it. You just... And you're going for it, and bang, you're there. Do you attack it? You attack. I, I I feel like you attack the the performance. Is that a level of yeah. anxiety? Does that come with the package of going up on stage? Yeah, it does. Yeah, the nervousness, and uh, you know, um, whatever's pissing you off at the minute, if you can channel that into the songs, that will recreate the original anger that you wrote the song with. You know what I mean? Mm. Some of the mm. anger that you wrote the songs with disappears after time because you've changed, you've moved on. That's interesting. Uh, and so you just channel whatever anger, frustration is is there, which to a certain degree is a bit of a problem because it might be a day where you run out of anger and frustration. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You know I mean, so what are you going to do then? Um, you know, and I, I think you try and I try and adopt. Um, I just think back to. Things that upset you. I mean, in, in the way that an actor does to try and get emotions, whether it be childhood memory, whether it be this, whether it be that, whether it be continued hang-ups about things, uh, you could channel that. You know, anything yeah. acts as petrol for the car when you're performing, really. Continued maybe. hang-ups, yeah. Yeah, there's certain hang-ups that, that come from a real kind of pain point inside yourself. And yeah. I'm presuming that when you're writing even new tunes, there still is that avatar yeah. of the thing Watch that's it. in your head. <laughs> yeah, it's still there. It's like, yeah, definitely. You know, 
you might not be conscious of it, but it's still there. Yeah. You know, sometimes people pick it out. It quite surprises you, but, but it's right. You know, I think that some things you never learn to overcome. You just learn to live with and to, uh, you learn to self-regulate more importantly. Self-regulate. Uh, that is a, you know that's I mean? a, yeah, I do know what you mean. Self-regulating. Oh my God. That is, that's a, that's an achievement in a day in itself. If you're able to do so, that, yeah. you know, if you're able to do that, you can manage yourself a lot more effectively. People are searching for that mental health, um, uh, the answer. They're looking for their own personal answers. It's actually from within, isn't it? You know, if you can channel yeah. it in music or creativity or you know the beast that's inside you, you just got to work around it. It's a real yeah. blessing. Yeah. I think, you know, um, some tools I learned from psychotherapy, just literally just talking to someone then that other person doesn't necessarily give you the answers because you don't get the answers a lot of the time. Most of the time, you just are able to view it as a spectator, whatever's in your head, because it comes out and you then place it into your hands and you, you discuss it with that other person. There might be a couple of suggestions or there might be expertise coming from whoever's got you in a session, uh, you know, I don't know, experiences, whatever, mm. theories, that could help you better understand whatever's doing your edit. But I found, I found that was a real effective tool for moving forward, you know. And mm. I don't need to go back and have sessions like that because I think now I'm at a stage where I can regulate. It might take a while to get over some things, but... You eventually do because you get to a point where it's like, well, this, the only reason why this is in my head still is because it's an issue of mine that I need to attend to. And so then you just explore that issue. You talk about it to yourself mm. and it makes that issue flatten out. It irons it out. And you, you feel like you're freed up from it a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I feel you. And as life, happens and we get older bigger things come into play that oh shit that really was an impact on my life yes sometimes you don't want the baggage of old habits and problems because no. it just escalates it, adds. it just escalates yeah it adds to it because the problem the behaviorism that you adopt when you when you have these issues in your head if it is a an old school traditional way of dealing with it, it's no good. You need to get rid of that. You need to get rid of that and find another way of dealing with it. Um, you know, our bodies literally can't take yeah, yeah. <laughs> too many drugs and alcohol. I mean, how long can you do it for? You know, yeah. it's like, I did it until I was 46. I took it till I was 40, no, 45. So... What was the weapon of choice, curiously? Loads. Coke, beer. Yeah. Cigarettes, weed, yeah. speed, yeah. anything, anything upper, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah and then yeah. as soon as I gave up the old beer, everything else is easier. It's the social impact. Beer, it cuts edges. It's where all your friends go. When I stopped drinking, man, I used to fucking resent my friends thinking to myself, why do you, why can't you be with me? Why are you, yes. you know what I mean? Oh, you got to, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, definitely. I still resent drinkers. Even if I go out, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. mate, you stink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You stink and you're talking shit. But, you know, it's, in a lot of respects, it's a beautiful invention. You know, it's a, if it's handled correctly, it can be just as beneficial as, uh, you know, a good plate of pasta or whatever. You know what I mean? It can be just yeah. as beneficial. But well, the I story of it was, wasn't it? Working. The the story of it was, wasn't it, that people used to have it like on their cornflakes, literally, because the water in, in the world was so bad. Like, oh, really? Alcohol was the thing. Kids used to drink it before going to school, That back in the day. Fuck. That's why it was that's, always the thing. It's always become incredible. the thing. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> I suppose so, because it's like, you just, if, if you haven't got clean running water, somebody invents something that is basically, yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was fucked. <laughs> Everyone was fucked. God, that's insane. Imagine that. Yeah. It's insane. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a beautiful invention. And so there is a bit of resentment there because I can't have it anymore. I can if I want to, but I, I, don't, I don't think it, I don't know why I'd feel after a glass of wine. Uh, I just think, what, where, where's that going? I need to get to a point with it where it's like, portion of peas on your plate, not really. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally honest with you. I've been off it now. I mean, I don't know when people are going to be watching this, but at this point in conversation, it must be about seven months. And Ooh. yeah, yeah. I'm in a place where I'm like, I could, I can sit around people who are drinking with, you know, my, my, my soft drink or whatever and feel totally liberated in the next sure. morning. I'm good with that. Sure. That's, that's, that's the still, biggest catch. Yeah. 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 It's, I'm, I'm pleased with it, but you know, not a sh- not a shade on what what you've achieved. It's just more, I can relate with you entirely. Where there's a bit of me that's, I'm I'm, and I know it comes from me. I'm resentful that I'm not drinking and they are, and they just look like they can get on with it without any trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, that I mean, that's the thing with it. You know, it, it looks like that, but a lot of the time, you just think this is doing you no good either. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, you're not as extreme as I was, but it's still. I just don't think. I don't know. I think the first year is. Yeah, once you get past a month, <clears throat> I think you've got a, a little bit of a handle on it. It's like yeah. you're there. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, look, really hard getting past those first few weeks. The resistance is incredible. Like just the thing in your head, you just like. You're out irritable and you don't realise what the fuck it's been doing all this time, isn't it? Sure, totally, totally. So, um, no, that's that, that's great. That's, that's, that's good, man. Yeah, man. Well uh, I think from a, a fan point of view as well, speaking personally as well, it must, it, it must be actually really, really cool that you wear your heart on your sleeve on your lyrics and then all of a sudden a fan turns around you about and tells you about yourself with a lyric that you put in just because you were in this particular headspace. That's incredible, isn't it? Yes, brilliant. Yeah. It um, means a lot. You don't dwell on it too much, but I think, uh, yeah, it's just the name of the game, isn't it? You know what I mean? yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, You've got the big tour coming up. I mean, by the time people hear this, there's going to be loads of tours. Like you're selling out, man. Going to different countries. This is just, you know, unprecedented levels of, of Brit pride coming out and doing, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, honestly, it's like, you know, this is, this is celebratory shit in my mind because uh, it, it's a shining example of the kind of, the kind of project that Britain's really good at pulling out the bag. Do you know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. How's it feel to be going out um, in 2021 slash 2022 and embarking on something that we've been so prohibited not to for so long? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit weird because, um, you know, it's winter, COVID's flying around like God knows what. So you don't want to be getting it too much because it just wipes it just wipes all your plans out for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard about it's, this. This is, you know, you've got some people that are celebrating the fact that they, they you know, you can't be taking this this uh, tablets or oh, the injection, but then oh, and everyone's getting ill in the clubs. Yeah. I mean, I'm double vaxxed, but you know, I got it. But I think if I hadn't been vaxxed, it would have been heavier. Mm. And really, and well, so what do you think you're going to do? You, you, you're going to keep getting it without this like vaccination, and it's just it's just going to keep slapping you about. Yeah. What's the? Just help people out. Have the bloody vaccine, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want so the gigs? Yeah, you can't so, do it. Yeah. Yeah, and the gigs, you know, you've got to be. I think a lot of these venues are like you've got to be, you've got to be vaxxed or, you know, a lot of the a lot, we've had a lot of people are getting getting in touch on social media having a go at this because we they think that we've we've come up with this plan, but it's like no, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> it's the government bait. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. they've come up with that, but you know, yeah. as much as I can't stand them, you know what I mean? It's like. Is it not the sensible option to to uh, your fellow man? To, to, yeah, to go in there protected slightly. Yeah. Uh, you know, come on, give me a break. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It'd be good. Um, I probably won't do as much socialising as I normally would because I just want to keep it real and just try and keep myself in good health yeah. so I can perform. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. 
Well, the future's bright, my brother. And uh, the future's bright, mate. Yes, for both of us, so it seems. Yeah, yeah. lots of good things happening. Um, I'm going to check you at a gig ASAP. What's it? Uh, Printworks, is it you're playing in London? Yeah, come down. Just give us a shout. We'll sort you out. Fucking great. I'll have a bit of that. That sounds wicked. Jason, you're a star, man. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast, no, brother. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on. It's been, uh, it's, been, it's been really nice meeting you and talking. Yeah, man. More life, more of that, please. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, out like him was out of fashion. You know what the deal is. Yeah, sharing is caring. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky now. Peace. <laughs>